What's up, YouTube? This is Mathwiz97, and welcome back to my SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 General Manager Mode. Last time, we saw that we are not doing so well in the, in the financial department. So, I mean, there are certain things I can do here to, to build up some cash, if I, if I will need it. Although, for now, I'm more concerned with the risk of fatigue. <laughs> I mean, we can do the photo shoot. Does that cause fatigue? Who's somebody that I can have do a photo shoot? Who I can, who I won't have to worry about fatigue with. Let's do, let's do, um, it'd be good for, I don't, I don't know, we'll use the champ, I guess. A little bit of fatigue won't hurt. Okay, plus 5%, that's, that's not bad. So we got 500 cash out of that. Still not great. Hey, but ECW, they flopped. And Monday Night Raw only had a three-star show. This could be our week. This could be our week. In a women's championship matchup that didn't do so well, Mick James defeated Chavo. Triple H Kali with William Regal defeated Terry Funk and Sandman. Batista defeated Rey Mysterio. And a steel cage triple threat matchup was won by Sabu. Okay, so they defeated Mick Foley and Bret Hart. Then as for ECW, they had no opening matches. I don't understand why ECW always does this. Like, it's always ECW who seems to have these issues of not booking a full show. But you, actually, maybe not just them. We had a six-man tag team match, which was won by Bobby Lashley, Kelly Kelly, and Tori Wilson. Then you had The Undertaker with Michelle McCool, defeating HBK and Randy Orton in a tag team matchup. Interesting alliance there. I believe The Undertaker and Michelle McCool are, I think they're married in real life, so that's an interesting pairing. Uh, I don't know, were they, were, they a, were they an item by this time, back in 2008? I have no idea. And then Stone Cold won a Fatal 4-Way. But again, ECW title, nowhere in sight on this show. So maybe they're going to realize that. Maybe next week they'll throw it out. But they're giving us an opportunity this week. We could potentially steal some ratings here. And I think we're going to have to jump on that. So we did it. We did our photo shoot. We got 500 cash. I don't know what that's ultimately going, going to accomplish. But uh, yeah, we, we are in some trouble. Autograph signings, we can continue doing those. I guess... Um, Who's been doing pretty well? Chris Masters has been doing well. So we'll give him an autograph signing. Maybe he's got some some fans going going for him. And I'll skip that last day again. I mean, I already had an extra day from the pay-per-view, so it will let it go. So I gotta deliver big on this show. We have to we have to take the opportunity that has been presented to us. And we gotta run with it. So maybe this week I could skip out on the advertising just to make sure that we put on the, the highest quality show possible. Mark Henry's not not looking too good with that dropping morality though. Or not popularity rather, not morality. What am I what am I saying? So this week I'm gonna go ahead and continue to build off of the the little three-way dance we've been having with the tag teams with the Hardy Boys and such. So I am going to put let's put Shad in a matchup against we'll do Jeff Hardy. So it's gonna be Shad versus Jeff Hardy. We'll have Kane in that corner. And then later on in the show, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do something a little unorthodox. Um, all right, crap, that's going to actually ruin the other plan that I was going to have. But we're going to put the Cruiserweight title on the line again. Only this time, it's gonna we're going to have some different challengers. I know this would basically mean that anybody who could challenge for the Cruiserweight title has challenged for the Cruiserweight title. But it could potentially be a way to, I don't know, keep things going with the... The whole Carlito JTG, uh, you know, the Demon's Apple crime time thing. Even though they're not officially booked in a rivalry because JT Actually, wait. JTG's a face, and I think Carlito was a heel, so it could happen. Yeah, I guess I, guess I might as well. I mean, that removes a little bit of booking potential out of that. But I think, yeah, just do it for the four weeks. Because this is just what we've been, what we've been limited to. Actually, Matt Hardy could be in there, too. I forgot. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, actually, no, I don't want, yeah, I didn't, that's fine. It's only gonna be a short-term thing. Now, I could put Matt Hardy in here as well. So maybe instead of, instead of Johnny Nitro, we'll just have a triple threat. We'll just do, we'll just do it that way. Because we have a single with manager matchup here. So this one will just be a triple threat. We'll, we'll hold off on the Cruiserweight title for right now. I'll leave Nitro to do other things. What I would like to do, however, since that, that takes care of the two tag team rivalries, 
So we've got our big our big guns left over. We've got the US title thing that's been going on. Edge and CM Punk desperately need to win matches. Desperately, desperately, desperately. So what I think I'm going to do to mix things up a bit for this week's show, we're going to put the United States Championship on the line. It's not going to be CM Punk who's challenging for the title, however. And as much this would <clears throat> this would kill Chris Masters' momentum, unfortunately. But I think I'm going to give him a U.S. title match because he's been doing well. I just think that at the moment, I might need him to just take the loss here to Booker because CM Punk needs a win. And we having, a, having the U.S. title on the line for this show would probably help to boost it. I know that Masters is not the most prestigious challenger that we could use. Prestigious, prestigious. I still haven't figured out the proper way to say that word. But we're going to... We're going to throw the U.S. title on the line in the show. Which then leaves... we got a couple of different things. I, can, I, I, I can't even words right now. There are a couple of different ways that I could take the rest of this card. I think another smart decision would be to just go ahead and give Edge a singles match with John Cena. Because they're our two highest popularity guys on the show. So have them just main event at the top. And plus we can work it storyline wise. Edge, he's 0 for 3 so far in the series. Does he really deserve a shot at John Cena's world title? So we'll give him a one-on-one -on -one matchup with John Cena where Edge, if he can beat Cena, then yeah, he deserves that title shot. And yeah, we're going to interview Edge. I'm going to hold off on the advertising promos for this week. So I, we need this show to be the best it can be. We, def we desperately need to capitalize on this, which is why for the remaining superstars, I'm just going to leave Mark Henry off the show for this week because the way I see it, uh, sticking with higher popularity superstars is going to be the best bet in this scenario. Although how I want to go about doing that is still still the question here. This next match is going to be a bit of an odd one, but it's kind of a combination of various different storylines we've got going on. And it's kind of, I guess, to play sort of like numbers game here on Umaga specifically. So we're going to put Umaga up against, it's going to be uh, well, I guess we'll have we'll have MVP at ringside for this one, but it's going to be Mr. Kennedy and I guess just Gregory Helms. We're going to leave Mark... Oh, actually, no, no, no. I thought about putting Johnny Nitro in this matchup, and I would kind of like to, but making the pairing be like the two behemoths, having it be Henry and Umaga. Actually, yeah, I am going to put Nitro here just for the popularity because we, we need to go with our, our best guns here. So... Dykstra and Henry are going to remain off the show for this week. But we still got Helms in here with Nitro to kind of continue that dynamic. Although mainly the focus is on Umaga. So we'll see if if Umaga and the Cruiserweight Champion can manage to take down Kennedy and MVP. Even though the odds are stacked against him. That that type of dynamic. Or maybe if I do MVP, to, I don't know. It, it's, it's a weird matchup here. It's just a weird show overall. But I guess the main focus is on these two matchups. That just tends to be the case with GM mode. You'll get some odd, odd matchups here and there. Uh, yeah, but I do think it's ultimately in my best interest to keep Henry and keep Henry and Dykstra off the show for this week, just because we got backlash coming up. We desperately need to have oh, desperately need to have a good show. And as for this promo, we could. I don't know what would be the best the best use of things here. We could do rivalry attack. Yeah. No, because I'm worried about the fatigue. Because yeah, otherwise, yeah, because it o can only be superstars involved in a rivalry. So maybe we could have. Nah, I'll, I'll I'll hang on to that rivalry attack for the future, but for right now, that's that's not not what I want to do. And I guess we could. Do I need to resort to this already? Do I need to resort to the interference and slander promotions? Uh, I might have to... We'll try it. The last thing I want is for something to backfire, but I think this would be the week to do it when Raw and ECW had kind of lackluster shows, to be fair. So I'll try the slander promotion. See if that pays off. Otherwise, I mean... We're already kind of getting shot in the foot by just the nature of this challenge, so... Hey, if it backfires on us, then it's only just going to expedite the process. It's just going to speed things up. So, matches, we don't need to play this one. 
Jeff Hardy defeats Shad. Cool, cool. This triple threat, I also don't feel it's necessary to play. JTG gets the win, so Crime Time is keeping keeping up there. So we got a nice, a nice balance of victories there. And I would like to play this one just to make sure that Umaga gets the win to stay undefeated. But hey, if he loses here, it's a numbers game. And yep, they lost. Okay, so Umaga's undefeated streak is over. That kind of sucks. But it was in a tag team match. So, eh. As long as he's okay in singles matches, I'm fine. It, the tough, it, It's tough to try to play something like that with this while also trying to not die in the ratings. Because, I mean, also you have MVP and Kennedy. Kennedy's going to need a win eventually. This is, I guess, the, the best way to get him one. But for right now, these are the focal points. Masters challenging for the U.S. title, and then Edge versus John Cena. The problem then with this matchup is that we're basically, by the end of this show, we have now killed off two of, I think, our three undefeated superstars because Umaga just lost. And then in this matchup, we've got Masters and Booker who are both undefeated. Somebody's going to lose in this matchup tonight. And it, realistically, it's going to be Chris. I mean, if he could pull off the upset here, that would be cool because he'd be a superstar who kind of just got this push out of nowhere. Like, it wasn't initially planned. He beats the world champion John Cena in the first night, then goes on to score a massive upset over Booker. Unfortunately, that would then give CM Punk yet another loss. And my plans would backfire on me again. But hey, maybe Masters can get the job done. Chris Masters, he's 3-0 so far. He's had quite an impressive streak of matches since that United States Championship Tournament where he did lose to Booker. So this could be also, for him, a chance for revenge. So we'll see if he can get the job done. But of course, CM Punk will be at ringside for this matchup. He's already down the ramp just waiting for Booker to arrive. CM Punk, he doesn't want to come out with Booker. He just, I mean, he just despises this man. This man has been... Seemingly dodging him, screwing him over at every turn. And now, CM Punk has got a front row seat to King Booker's very first United States Championship title defense. We'll see how Booker fares against Masters here tonight. You, it, it, it truly is going to be a clash for the ages when the Masterpiece squares off with the King. The King of SmackDown. And that is, of course... King, Buka, as these two men are squaring up, getting ready to go. As they go face to face, the referee rings the bell and the match is underway. It's Booker versus Masters, and straight out of the gate, it's Booker, who's got Masters, looking at going for the, going on the attack straight off, straight off the bat, right out of the gate. He's got him by the arm, and a vicious elbow to the shoulder there. Of course, Booker perhaps trying to work on the arms, trying to cut down the power of Masters, and of course. Try to negate that deadly master lock. As there's a counter now by Masters. Booker tried to pick him to his feet. But now Masters has got him got him by the skull here. But Masters, he's got the strength advantage. And Chris Masters drops him with a scoop slam. As now the masterpiece is going to drag Booker to the center of the ring. That is going to, going to be where Masters has the advantage. At the center of the ring. Keep Booker away from the ropes. Anything that could allow Booker to try to compensate for that that power disadvantage but as well keep him grounded on the canvas or toss him to the outside that works too just keep him down so he can't utilize more speed so he can't quicken the pace of this matchup and here's a little something for the fans. as masters tell him to bring it booker seems a little a little uneasy there on the outside a little hesitant to get into the ring with masters I've said it before, but Masters is goading him on. Masters is telling him to get inside the ring. Oh, but Booker. Booker tried to grab the foot. And Masters is not going to get pulled. He's not going to get fooled like that. Not going to get played. As again, Masters just mocking him. Booker inside the ring now. Oh, no. He went for the massive kick. But Masters had it scouted. Booker tried to catch him off guard with a quick kick. And again. And again, Masters is going to toss Booker to the outside. But this time he goes out in pursuit. Because Masters knows that he can't win the title via a countout. Masters must win by either pinfall or submission. And now look at this. Look at this. Chris Masters with a bear hug on the outside. But Booker quickly, quickly trying to escape it. Trying to break out of it. And with that clap to the, side, to the sides of the skull, he did just that. Masters trying to get away. Trying to get back inside the ring. But Booker's not going to let it happen. 
as Booker's got him over by that barricade. Oh, and face first. Face first, Masters bounces off that barricade. As Masters shoves him away, but Booker doesn't have to get inside the ring. Doesn't Masters know this? Well, again, Booker tries to pick the foot. Masters goading him in, and finally, well, I thought Booker almost was gonna take the count out there, but Booker did make his way back inside the ring. Perhaps Masters has gotten under his skin. You know, knowing the type of fighter that Booker is, I almost thought he was gonna take the count out there. But evidently he did not want to do so. He wants to prove that he is the best here on SmackDown. And again, Masters dumps him to the outside. I mean, I don't understand quite, I don't quite understand why Masters is doing this. Because all he's really gonna do is just give Booker an opportunity to, to take the easy out. Well, Masters now going out in pursuit. He's going to make sure it doesn't happen. But he just walks straight into a devastating kick by Booker. As now Booker with these clubbing blows to the back. Masters trying to resist, trying to fight out. Oh, but a massive punch to the skull. And now Booker, he's the one to mock Masters here. Masters back to his feet. He's going to go inside the ring. Booker's going to follow him in, but it's Masters who's there first. Oh, but he took too much time. Masters was starting to showboat. Trying to goad Booker into attacking him, and that's just what Booker did. It's now Booker. No wait counter by Masters. Masters with the picture-perfect reversal, but Booker with a reversal of his own side rushing leg sweep. A side rushing leg sweep delivered by King Booker. And now Booker's measuring his man for that royal knee straight across the skull. And now Booker's going to throw up a pose for the crowd, but Masters is back to his feet. Masters is back to his feet. Booker shouldn't be posing. Oh my goodness. Look at the strength. You got to be kidding me. Masters is going to try to dump him to the outside, but Booker, Booker not having any of it. Booker not having any of that. Ducking out the back door. Dropping it with a sit-out mat slam. And now he just can't get a hold of Masters, though. He's unable to capitalize to try to put him away. Because Chris Masters still able to put up a resistance. The devastating backbreaker from the masterpiece. As Booker back to his feet. There's a kick to the midsection and a vicious kick to the skull. Booker T damn near kicked his head clean off his shoulders. His masters with a knee lift. But here's Booker with another kick to the skull. Another devastating shot. His King Booker is just relentless right now in his attack. Masters so far has done little to little to answer it. Oh, but wait, Booker. No. Well, I thought Masters was going to have Booker on the back foot here. But a nice counter from Booker T and a DDT. A DDT delivered. And now Booker. He might think that we're closing it on the end. And he's saying this is the end. Oh, and he's going to cap it off with a spin a Rooney. Booker with a spin a Rooney. He's feeling it. Kick to the midsection. No, Masters with a counter. Masters with a counter. And now Masters has got him up on his shoulders this time. Oh, Booker, that might come back to cost him. No, 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 no. Again, Masters is going to try to dump him to the outside. No way he changed his mind. Booker is trying to fight it. Oh, but straight into a gut buster. A devastating gut buster there by Chris Masters off the military press. And now Masters into a camel clutch. Chris Masters using that power, using that strength to full effectiveness with this camel clutch. But King Booker ducks out the back door, sweeps out the legs. Masters face planted into the canvas. Oh, and the referee, the referee goes down. The referee goes down. Booker to the outside. Oh, no, and he's got a steel chair. No, 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 no. Masters. Masters thinks he's got this in the bag. Oh, he stole the chair. He stole the chair. But there's Booker with a knife edge chop. Booker now. Oh, missed the kick. Masters ducked it. And a knife edge chop of his own. Masters staggers, though, and Booker answers back with another knife edge chop. These two men just trading blows back and forth. But now it's Masters who has Booker up on his shoulders for a fallaway slam. And again, the power of Masters on display. It's Chris Masters, that steel chair still in the ring, but the referee is up to his feet now, so I don't imagine it's going to be used anytime soon. I don't want to take anything away from the masterpieces of As Booker was trying to get to his feet, but Masters looking to prevent that from happening, dragging him to the center of the ring. Oh no, and now a hard Irish whip straight into that turnbuckle. Booker, his spine bouncing off the steel. 
It's now Masters. What does Masters have in mind? Will Booker back to his feet? Knife edge chop. But a counter again by Masters. You know, Shot to the back. Oh, and a DDT or full out of steam behind that one. A devastating DDT by Masters. And now Chris Masters has him by the foot. Got him by the leg, dragging him to the center of the ring. There's a punch to the face. Oh, Booker blocked that one. But Masters blocked that one. But Booker blocked that one. Just block after block. Counter after counter. There's Booker T now. Has got him. Looking to outpower him here. There's a punch to the face. Masters is down. Booker looking to bring him to his feet. With a boot to the... No, not a boot to the midsection. More like a punch to the face by Masters. As Booker, there's a shot to the midsection. But Masters, snap DDT. A snap DDT. Booker face planted into the canvas. And Booker, the champ, he's in trouble. Masters, another strike. Another strike. But now Booker trying to fight back, trying to fight back with these vicious knees. But Masters, Masters forces him into a power bomb and delivers. Booker nearly stood on his on his shoulder, stood on his neck by that power bomb. And now Masters drags him to the center of the ring. Oh, but Masters, you can see, Masters, he's in a bit of tr uh, a little off balance there. As Booker now missed with a missed with the attempted reverse elbow. As Masters with the strikes, counter by Booker, counter by Masters, counter by Booker. It's back and forth. As now Masters, counter again, counter again. Booker's in trouble. Booker trying to fight out of it, trying to resist, but a DDT again by Masters. Another DDT by Chris Masters, and now Masters is on a rampage. Chris Masters, this is his opportunity. This is his opportunity to deal out some devastating damage to King Booker, who's trying to fight back, but Masters not having any of it. A devastating gut wrench suplex. As Masters is dazed right now. And King Booker. King Booker tried to get out of harm's way, tried to get out of dodge, but Masters dropped him with a shoulder block. Is that steel chair still ominously present in the center of the ring? Oh, there's a shot. Another shot to the face by Masters. As Masters staggered again, able to dodge the reversed elbow, but not able to dodge that second one. As these two men right now, they are gassed. They have given it everything in this matchup tonight. Booker again, going to go back to that arm, back to that shoulder. Knife edge chop, boot to the midsection. Oh, he ducks under. Look out, look out. Full Nelson slam. Booker just stole Masters' full Nelson slam. But this time he's going to follow through with the devastating scissors kick. The scissors kick to the back of the skull of Chris Masters. Booker hooks the leg. One, two, three. And he retains his United States Championship. It wasn't easy, but King Booker, he managed to put away Chris Masters. He managed to retain his, his coveted United States Championship. And again, the question must be asked, how long is Booker going to be able to keep these types of performances up? I mean, Booker really has been a dark horse in the series. He's not someone who I suspected to be this successful this early on. But Booker, so far, he's got the most victories out of any superstar on the roster. And with the least amount of losses, the only man to still remain undefeated so far. Forget about Umaga, King Booker might be the true monster of this series. With Crime Time in his back pocket and his current winning streak, his current streak of performances, I don't know, he might be unstoppable. But right now we're looking at a man who has been the exact opposite of unstoppable, a man who has failed to even muster any momentum, to even get started in the series. And that is the Rated R Superstar, Edge. But tonight, it's make or break for him. He's going one-on-one -on -one with the World Heavyweight Champion, John Cena. And if Edge can get the job done here tonight, well, if he can't get the job done, well, then he might as well kiss his shot at the world title goodbye. But if he can score the win tonight, well, then there's no question that Edge does deserve to be the number one contender, that he does deserve to be in the position that he's in. And so far, he is 0 for 3. Three losses on three back-to-back -back episodes of SmackDown. Tonight, he looks to break the losing streak with a win over the current World Heavyweight Champion and the face of the blue brand, John Cena. Now that I've thought about it a bit more, I realize just how just how stupid the, the concept of these abilities are. Because, like, 
you have all these superstars who, yeah, they do have specialties. They can only do certain, they can only perform certain things. But by restricting them to the abilities, then, like, if I want to steal another person's finisher, I have to be a showman. If I want to, uh, what are the other options? Like, Strong Irish Whip, that's restricted to the powerhouse guys. If I want to do dirty moves, I have to be dirty. So if I want to, if I want to do the poke to the eye, low blow combo, I gotta be the heel. I gotta be the, I have to have the dirty ability. I have to be able to do the dirty, as it were. I know... I, I, ju I just processed the context for that, but hey, you know, that's that's how heels work. Nah, I don't know. But yeah, it, it's a weird mechanic. I'm glad that they dropped it shortly after. It might have been in 2009. I don't recall if it was or not. But yeah, I'm really glad that they dropped it. Again, when it comes to these older games, the gameplay just, in my opinion, does not hold up. Like this... The SmackDown vs. Raw series just, eh, it just doesn't compare to where we are nowadays with WWE 2K17, 2K18. I don't know why I said 2K17, but yeah, the the gameplay just is so much better in the newer games. It's one thing that, like, even if the game modes might not be the greatest, there's still a lot of improvements that need to be made to these newer games. But the gameplay itself is pretty solid. Even if it's buggy, if it can be glitchy at times, I still think like the matches are the smoothest that they've ever that they've ever been. Right now, Edge able to counter John Cena, shrugs him off. It's just back and forth. These two men continue to trade suplexes here. As there you see it again, Edge had him up there. John Cena throws him back down. Does John Cena know? Edge shrugs him off. Edge now going for the referee. You can see Edge. Edge is getting a bit desperate. Cena with a kick to the referee, trying to prevent him from falling to the mat, perhaps. Maybe just because John Cena thinks he can put Edge away quickly. And he wants, so he, quick and and so he wants to make sure that the referee will be there to count the pin. As Edge whipped off the ropes, hip toss by Cena. And right now, Edge, things are not looking too good for him. He desperately needs the win here. But to get that win, he's got to start striking back against Cena who is just repeatedly keeping Edge down, not allowing him to muster any offense. And again, like we, like I said in the match between MVP and Umaga a couple of weeks ago, doesn't matter how much punishment you can take, how much you can kick out of, because if you can't dish out the punishment, if you can't dish out any offense, you're never going to win the match. Doesn't matter how much endurance you have, how much damage you can take, got to be able to dish it out. And that's just what Edge did with that inverted suplex dropping Cena onto that top rope as Edge now is starting to build up ahead of steam. He's got Cena up on his shoulders. Oh, but Cena with an elbow to the side of the skull. Cena looking to maneuver out of it, but instead it's Edge who drives him into the canvas with that rolling senton. Now Edge going for the submission. Edge looking to see how his power holds up against the man John Cena as he's got the knee straight into the back, got the arms hooked. But Cena, Cena is able to fight out of it, able to power his way out of the hold. As again, Edge has got the referee. And this time, Edge sends the referee colliding into John Cena. But Cena, oh, no, that just fired him up. But maybe that's what Edge was looking for. Trying to ignite a fire in John Cena so that he could capitalize on it. So that Cena would make mistakes. Oh, and Edge is definitely going to capitalize on that. With a running kick straight to the chest. This superstar is all and again, Edge now has him up on the shoulders. Got him in the... Oh, the Samoan drop delivered. Devastating offensive assault there by Edge. Now going to work on the leg. Just wrenching that leg all out of place. Oh, and now Edge. You don't. You can't be serious. Edge could be looking to put Cena away right now. Looking to perhaps break him in half with this spear. The devastating spear delivered by Edge. Tremendous impact. And Edge thinks he might have this match in the bag. But he's got to drag Cena away from the ropes. Does not want Cena to get a rope break here. Down into the cover. Is Cena down and out? Two. No. John Cena manages to kick out at a count of two. And look at this. The referee. I mean, Edge straight in the face of the referee here. That just goes to show how desperate Edge is to win this matchup. Oh, but Cena took him down. Cena took him down. And now John Cena. No. Edge shrugs him off. But Cena again locks up and a Saido suplex. Dropping Edge straight on his neck. And it looks like John Cena, he might have had enough. Again, Edge has the referee. 
And again, trying to send him into John Cena, but Cena able to able to fend him off. A nice counter by John Cena with that drop toe hold. Now he's got Edge by the skull. Oh, and now Cena. Cena's going to try out his submission prowess. As he's got the arms hooked here on Edge. Cena looking to try to try to tear him out of their sockets. But Edge having none of that. As now Cena gets countered. Edge able to stagger the world champ. Cena, oh! Sit out, Matt, slammed by Edge. I believe it's called the edge matic Is that going to be the key to success? Well, the submission certainly will not. Because that's a rope break. And Edge breaks the hold. Choosing not to, not to exploit the count. Instead, Edge breaks the hold before the referee starts his count. But instead, delivers with a pendulum backbreaker. John Cena. His back nearly broken across the knee of Edge. And now Edge has him up on his shoulders. Again, showcasing his power. Inverted suplex. This time, straight into the canvas. And Cena right now is in a world of trouble. Edge again going to go for the submission. It's going to be a rope break yet again. Is Edge going to utilize the count this time? No, he will not. Edge showing a bit more restraint on his part. But Cena trying to rally out of this out of this collar and elbow tie up, but Edge drops him. Drops him with a side rush and leg sweep. But Cena kicks him off. Edge, who knows what he was going for, but Cena not going to let it happen. And now Edge whipped into the corner. Cena with a massive clothesline, but he missed. Cena went for a massive clothesline, but he missed big time. It's now Cena. No! Had a full head of steam, but Edge used that to his advantage with the drop toe hold. And again, Edge measures him for that running boot. That running kick straight to the chest. Edge now up to the top rope. Look out, look out, elbow drop. Cena was trying to get back to his feet, but Edge caught him halfway, about halfway there with that elbow drop. There's a devastating knee lift to the midsection. A poke to the eye. No, 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 a low blow. Edge with a low blow. The referee not calling a disqualification. And that just shows that Edge is desperate. Desperate to put Cena away. Is that going to get the win, though? One, two, three. And Edge off the low blow defeats John Cena. You know, I thought that Edge was going to be a face in this series. I thought that Edge, after all the work he had put in with the show, he was going to, he was perhaps going to be the new face that would lead us into the next, the next, uh, what is the word? The next era of general manager mode. But, I mean, Edge, it just shows that if he does, I mean, this is what this is what a string of losses will do to a man. I mean, Edge, his desperation got the better of him. So while yes, he may be the man that he may be the man who is. What am I saying? Yeah, I thought Edge was going to be the face, but I mean, he might currently be the man who occupies the face role in this rivalry with John Cena. But I, there might be more potential for him as a heel. He might be another one of those guys like John Cena. He might be in that role where. Excuse me, he might just end up being a guy to, to put people over at the end of the day. Because, I mean, with that attitude, I, I can't I can't book him as a face very long in this series. He's got the dirty ability. He's going to wrestle like a heel. So, I don't know. We'll see how long he, he keeps up trying to appeal to the fans. We see what the desperation has done to him. But maybe now that he's got that win, maybe he'll, maybe he'll try to keep that part of himself. Maybe it's just a relapse for him. Because, you know... Edge, he's trying to change, but he's just struggling, man. Struggling to to adopt a more respectable uh, wrestling style. So we'll see how things go for him. Right now, I guess he's a bit of a tweener. You got, yeah, three star, two and a half, two and a half, three star, and a four, three and a half star, rather. So we had a three star show. We outperformed ECW, at least. Yeah, they had a two star. We had a two and a half. Oh, no, so we had the best show of the week. Thank goodness for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fan support. We would have gained some by that then. Okay, well, we held our ground at the very least. Because, like, the pay-per-view, there's a bit of a drop because of the ECW pay-per-view. And I imagine that Backlash is going to drop us right back down. But we were able to maintain our ground. And I guess that's the best we could ask for. So John Cena dropped down to number three. Booker up to number five now. He continues to roll. Edge jumps up to seven after that victory. So that, again, just goes to show what a losing streak will do to you. The moment you win, you shoot right back up. Although I don't think it's quite as dramatic as it would be with uh, a winning streak, where you just drop off the map. Like, where's Umaga? Where's Umaga? 
He, he lost, and he's just gone. He was up at 13. He, where, where'd he go? He just disappeared. So JTG somehow is on here, but not Shad. Got Kane and Carlito. Well, yeah, I guess JTG did win the triple threat. Shad lost his match. So I guess I can understand that. Yeah, but there's the Demon Zapple. Kennedy, Jeff Hardy. There's Umaga down at 24. Yeah, he took quite a hit. Quite a hit indeed. Yeah, he's not even in the world title picture now. Kennedy is. Which is interesting. I guess that, again, the power of the losing streak, what that'll do to you. CM Punk jumped up a few notches. Nitro dropped down. Crime time took a hit. MVP going up. Masters down because he lost. And yeah, everything else is the same. Everything else is stagnant. So now let's take a look at morale yet again. I think, yeah, Punk should be good. Edge should do. Yeah, he wants a title shot. That's fair. That's fair. Kennedy wants a title shot. Shad wants a title... Okay, yeah, I guess it was technically the Hardy Boys who got that title match. And Umaga wants one. I gotta figure out who, what title Umaga's gonna challenge for yet. Because I, I don't think having him up against Booker would be great. We could do like a triple threat, maybe. But, uh, yeah, I'll have to figure out what I want to do with him in the, the near future. Gregory Helms is actually gaining a steady amount of popularity on his own. I don't know where he's getting it from. I haven't done anything extra with him. But yeah, the guy's like... I'm really thinking I should use the calendar for these lower tier guys, especially somebody like Mark Henry and Kenny Dykstra, because at the moment, how am I going to use them? They're like 50-some-odd popularity. I think at like 60 minimum, like I, I'll boost them up to that, and then I'll stop. I'll leave them there. But like, you see, we had this two-star match between Masters and Henry. Again, Dykstra in there, it's a two-star show... We, we are in dire straits here, folks. So what I think we're going to do... Actually, I didn't even check the news. How did our our slander work? Did that help boost our ratings a bit? Where's WWE.com? That's what I want. Did the slander promotion help us at all? It's not going to actually show us anything, so how do I know if it worked? Because Raw got the plus 10,000. Because they, I guess, took more from ECW than we did. Okay, I just don't know how the slander promotion did. It might have failed, for all I know. Is that something that would show up in, like, finances? Let's look at our financials, though. Did we gain anything this week? Hey, we got a net profit. That's not bad. Yeah, it doesn't show anything about, like... It doesn't show anything about, you know, how the, the slander did. But I'm just glad that we gained some sort of a profit from that show. Ugh. Boy. Yeah, that, those finances, though, I gotta keep an eye on those, because that's gonna that's gonna be tricky. If we, if we hire all the lower tier guys, then yeah, that'll save us money, but if, then if we're not bringing in money, we're not gonna be able to hire anybody. So what I am gonna do, I'm gonna do another brand invasion. I could do the trophy date, but that costs money. Money is something I might have issues with down the road because if my shows are going to be lackluster as far as ratings are concerned. So I'm going to do the other brand invasion. I'm not going to put Mark Henry in any heavy stipulation matches, but right now, from a character standpoint, he's kind of pissed because he's lost a few matches. He's getting left off shows. He wants to be recognized. And he's Mark. He's Mark freaking Henry. Of course he's going to go berserk. And on a pay-per-view like Backlash, I think it's worth it. Plus five fan popularity. It's worth. Let's take a look. Raw, that's going to be a big boost for that. Oh, oh boy. Plus five, 25,000. Only a three and a half star show, though. So, I mean, it could have been worse. Could have been worse for us. Two and a half for that bizarre six man tag. Triple H with Regal defeats Sabu with Kali. So, I, I, good to see that Kalu is still, still a team. That's still a thing. Mysterio defeats Batista. Actually, that was a tag team matchup. And Terry Funk retains the Intercontinental title in a ladder match with Bret Hart. Glad to see the Intercontinental title is still the hardcore title. That hasn't changed at all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Other rivalries. I'm thinking it might be a good idea to turn Nitro face... Because what I'm also thinking I, I could do with the Hardy Boys... Because at the moment, they just will not get out... They will not disappear from this tag title picture. Because they, they won that that match up here. 
What I was thinking I could do was maybe put the Hardy Boys in like a tag title rivalry, or not tag title rivalry, but put them in a rivalry with uh, Helms and Dykstra and kind of throw Nitro in the mix as a floater just to keep the, keep the Cruiserweight title doing something. So I might do that. Let's throw, maybe not Jeff. I mean, it could be Jeff or Matt, either way. Let's do Matt and Helms, because I feel like, well, I mean, they're, they're friends, first of all. Like, they've got history with each other, Helms and the Hardy Boys. And I think, I think Helms more specifically with Matt. There was, uh, I think with version 1.0, Helms was a part of that. So we'll do this. GM Kiss Up, is there anything more prestigious I can do for that? Probably not. I think I've used it all up. All right, so GM Kiss Up it is. Gregory Helms and Matt Hardy. We'll do that for 12 weeks. And then, of course, the Cruiserweight title can be thrown in the mix. The tag titles can be thrown into the mix. There's a variety of different things we can do here. And then all I've got left at the moment is Jeff. And then a couple of floaters. So for now, I think this is fine. We're going to call it a day for this episode of SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 General Manager Mode. Thank you, as always, for joining me. And until next time, keep on YouTubing.